Good morning, Jags. Today on JAG TV, we will give you an update on the campus THC policy. And we will take you on a tour of some art available in Southtown. This, this is, is JAG, JAG TV. Studio 126 on campus. This is JAG TV. The Band Fall Marching Festival will take place Tuesday, October 1st from 7 to 9 p.m. at Hero Stadium. All NEISD bands will be there to show off their new shows. The Theater Fall production of Titus Andronicus will take the stage Thursday, October 3rd through Sunday, October 6th. General admission tickets are $10. And don't forget, homecoming is Saturday, October 12th. Tickets are on sale now during all lunches in the Jag Shack. Also, there is a cheer clinic this weekend in the gym beginning at 8 a.m. If you know anyone that would like to participate, contact Mrs. McKinley. At the start of the year, the campus introduced the new THC possession policy that would result in expulsion. Now, some new updates have been made to the policy. Ethan has more details. Consequences for students found in possession of THC on campus will now be accelerated. The campus now has immediate on-campus chemical testing, meaning expulsion will come much sooner for students in trouble. Uh, without a doubt, you know, it's, it's a product that is against the law. It is a felony offense. When the year started, the district announced that students found in possession of THC on campus would face felony charges. Just this week, parents received an email from the administration making them aware of the updated policy. Hopefully, this might deter someone from making that choice uh, to try something that they shouldn't try and especially to not have it around uh, the school. From JAG TV, this has been Ethan Blanchett. Seniors, with college applications right around the corner, you might have questions about financial aid and the FAFSA. Rain and Layla talk to our counselors about the process. While seniors and their parents have probably heard they need to complete the FAFSA this year, there's always a lot of students and families who don't know exactly what it is for or what it does. Do you know what FAFSA is? Uh, no, not really. Do you know what FAFSA is? No idea. Do you know what FAFSA is or do you think you know what FAFSA is? I think it's that exam you take um, to be on a low when you're on low income to get some somewhat of a scholarship from states. The information from the FAFSA is what's needed um, if they want to qualify for any type of scholarships and of course then also apply for any type of financial aid to help pay for school. Even though student aid is something all seniors can apply for, many just don't take advantage of it. So basically the biggest misconception is they think, oh we don't have, we make too much money, therefore we shouldn't complete it. Everyone should complete the FAFSA because it also helps in scholarship or grants. I mostly feel like kids nowadays like think about themselves and not really like the future. Setting up for FAFSA is simple, but there are some important things you need to know. They cannot be awarded any monies in college without completing the FAFSA. So if they are trying to get a scholarship, if they're trying to get financial aid, nothing can be awarded unless they complete the FAFSA. There's a great amount of resources online that include a checklist of what they should gather. It's a lot of documentation, like past um, tax returns and different information, because the whole point of the FAFSA is to help determine how much a family can contribute to college tuition, and then that way scholarships and other funds know how much the student could qualify for. For JAG TV, this is Layla Shafee. If you have any questions, talk to your counselor. If you are wanting more on your tray at lunch, there is a new feature in the cafeteria that you might want to know. Talia and Eduardo have more. The new sharing table in the cafeteria provides an alternative to throwing away unwanted food, allowing other students to have access to it. Well, this idea came out like three weeks ago with the custodians. One of the custodians named Teresa because some of the students left a lot of juice and fruit at breakfast, so she noticed that. So she started, you know, she asked me about it, and uh, then she went and talked to Miss Pearson about it. So Miss Pearson got in contact with me, and we get contact with School Nutrition Service. So they get all the paperwork, and um, we start this idea 
two weeks ago. Students with unwanted food can put it on the table for others to take and can also pick up items left behind by others. Well, they will help because if some students doesn't like any um, item on the tray, instead of throw it away, they can just put it on the ice uh, bin that we have outside and um, or some other students that still hungry or they want anything else or they want that specific item, they can come and just grab it and, and eat it and they'll be hungry or uh, if they can afford to buy some extra stuff. School hopes that the new idea will bring a decrease in waste of food. The sharing table can be used during all lunches and during breakfast. This, this idea started two weeks ago. Uh, this is our second week and we have a little bit of turn it, up, turn it on on the kids, but um, the administration is doing some a uh, lot of uh, announcements in the morning that way all the students know that we have it and um, they can start you know more and more get involved and if they don't want something they can just share it to somebody else. For Dark TV, this is Talia Pimienta. If you get on 281 and keep going south, you will eventually find yourself in Southtown, where San Antonio artists are showing off. Katie and Aldara have more. Although San Antonio is known for its unique historical attractions and displays on the Riverwalk, there is also another hidden treasure located just around the corner. Located downtown, Essex Modern City is a place for local muralists to display their art. Showcasing over 20 different artists, this has become a popular picture spot. Not only is it a place to take pictures, but every second Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m., it turns into an art, music, and food event. From downtown on Essex Street for Jack TV, this has been Katie Peters. And now for your update on what's going on around our community. Here's Nick with ASA. In case you haven't been paying attention, here's what's happening in the Alamo City. Six Flags is hosting another 30-hour coffin challenge, whittling down six contestants until just one is left. The winner gets $600 in various Six Flags merchandise, including the coffin itself. Popular chain Torchy's Tacos is opening up a new location on 1604. The award-winning chain from Austin has had visits from many people, including former President Barack Obama. Austin-based interactive art museum Hopscotch Light and Sound is getting a San Antonio location, predicted to open October or November this year. That's all for this week, Jags. See you next time. It was a big weekend for the Jags, kicking off district play with a big win. Nick Casanueva is here with Jag Sports. It was a great week to be a Jag, with the Jaguars getting the win against Reagan on the field and the blowout against MacArthur on the court. This is Jag Sports. Volleyball took on the Bramas this Friday and beat them soundly in three sets. The Jags will play Roosevelt this Friday at Roosevelt, so if you can, come out and support. It was the game you look forward to all year, our own local rivalry. The Jags met the Rattlers at Heroes last Friday and beat them for the third time on the gridiron since the school opened. The Jags opened up strong with Ty Reasoner running near 80 yards to tie the game 7-7 in the first. In the second quarter, the Jags took the lead with a 47-yard field goal by Reed Kiney. Then, Reagan put up another touchdown, but Reed County responded to put the Jags up 16-14 with 24 seconds left in the half. At the half, the Jags were up 17-14 and there was still plenty to come. With 9 minutes left in the third, Ty Reasoner punched it in to put the Jags up 24-14. Then we saw Justin Rodriguez work his magic and increase the lead to 31-17. Reagan started to close the gap, but J-Rod wouldn't let them get too close, making the score 38-24. The Jags took the win with a final score of 38-31. The Jags will play Lee this Saturday at 7 p.m. Also, a big shout out to the Jungle for bringing their A game this week. That's all we have this week for Jags Sports. See you next time, Jags. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the Jaguar Jungle. Tonight, the Johnson Jaguars host the Madison Mavericks in a head-to-head -head wrestling duel. 
Presenting tonight's matches, wrestling with the girls at 98 pounds for the Mavericks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event in the Jaguar Jungle. Tonight, the Johnson Jaguars face the Madison Mavericks in a head-to-head -head wrestling duel. Presented, Presented tonight's, tonight's matches, matches starting, with, starting the with the girls at 98, 98 pounds, pounds for the Mavericks. For the Mavericks. And for the Jaguars! Alright, maybe, maybe. And finally, here's something fun from our crew. All right, team, this is it. The moment we've all been training for. For years, we've been neglected and left in the dark. We had forbidden knowledge just out of reach. Well, no more. Today, we fight. It may be hard, and not all of us might make it out alive. I promise you, between I, the stormtrooper, Santa's elf, the reindeer, and whatever the heck you are, it'll be worth it. Now, who's with me? Yeah! That's all for this week, Jags. From Jag TV, this has been Rain Antunes and Javier Juarez. See, See you next time, Jags. Jags.